Like, holy crap, look! And it was a perfect triangle just floating across the sky, way up there. Yeah. <laughs> Aliens first thing that I thought, but it scared the heck out of me. It isn't exactly close encounters of the third kind, but this series of strange lights, which appeared in the northern Arizona sky last night, has thousands of people scratching their heads. I think it was a spaceship of some sort, because, I mean, I've never seen anything like that before. And Last night, shortly after 8 p.m., hundreds, maybe thousands of Arizonans reported seeing a triangular-shaped object with three distinct lights streaking across the sky at incredible speed. Just right up there, and then it flew like right across over and down that way. According to reports, the sightings began at about 8.20, just north of Prescott, with the lights then moving rapidly from Prescott to Glendale to Tempe to Chino Valley, and finally arriving in Tucson at about 9 o'clock. The lights traveled close to 200 miles in about 40 minutes. Even a commercial airline pilot here at Sky Harbor Airport reported seeing the lights last night. He radioed the tower just after takeoff, telling them that the object was directly above him. That means that air traffic controllers in the tower should have picked the object up on their radar screens. And yet they say they saw nothing. Over the past 10 years, there have been literally hundreds of sightings all over the country, especially here in the Southwest. But this sighting is different. The UFO group MUFON, Mutual UFO Network, calls this the most dramatic sighting in Arizona this decade. Now we have checked into it. We called the FAA, Sky Harbor Airport, and Luke Air Force Base for some kind of an explanation as to these strange lights, and so far we have nothing. Paul and Robin. Phil, you said over the last 10 years there's been a lot of significant sightings across the country. When was the last one here in the Southwest? Well, according to uh, MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, about two weeks ago, they say there was a series of four golden disks or flying saucers that were hovering just above Phoenix. That's the first I've heard of it. All right, well, we'll be keeping our eyes up on the sky. A little spooky that they couldn't find it on radar. Bill, thanks very much. Okay. That it was at least big as a football field, at least. As it got closer, it got kind of spooky because there was no noise with it. It was completely silent. No noise, not a sound, not a sound, totally quiet. You heard nothing, absolutely nothing. No noise, no noise. Hundreds of witnesses report the same thing a huge, silent, V-shaped object. It was spotted from Henderson, Nevada, through Prescott, across Phoenix, and on down to Tucson. It was both terrible and tremendous. It, was, mm -hmm. it had a thrill about it to see something like that in the sky, and yet it, it, was, it was a shock. Max and Shala Saracen spotted the object about 8.20 while driving home from a shopping trip. We got out of our car and then just looked up, and then it just came right over our heads. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. So the lights went like this, and it was two miles between these two points. The object was captured by one video camera. What it doesn't show you is the huge size of the thing people say they saw. But this video matches the descriptions offered by witness after witness. What did all those people see passing over them in Phoenix that March 13th? And what was the huge light display at 10 o'clock at night? More than one year later, there are still more questions than answers, and plenty of controversy. It's either military, it's a hoax, or it's unknown. Former Phoenix City Councilwoman Frances Emma Barwood is the only city official to look for answers, and she has paid a price for it. When Barwood proposed to her colleagues that they at least ask some questions, she was met with a stony, chilling silence. Kind of curious, especially since People are starting to ask more questions. Thanks. Thank you. Councilman Siebert. After the meeting was over, one of the deputy city managers came over to me and said, you shouldn't have asked that question. And I said, why? And he said, well, you just opened Pandora's box. They didn't want to deal with it. Barwood was shunned, ridiculed, poked fun at in political cartoons. Governor Fife Symington, on the verge of being indicted for bank fraud and misrepresentation, made a complete joke out of it. Escort the accused into the room so that we may all look upon the guilty party. Don't get him too close to me, please. <laughs> but the witnesses aren't laughing. The military are disowning the whole situation. Either they know or they don't know. It's, it's one or the other, and they're not saying either way. 
and people feel very angry about that. Max Saracen and other witnesses want to know what they saw, but finding out isn't that easy. The Air Force told UPN News 13 it no longer investigates UFOs since Project Blue Book was closed in 1969. Barwood sent letters to senators looking for answers and was told the same thing. They do not do investigations on UFOs. Now, what is interesting to me is in these days of terrorism, we don't have anybody investigating anything that invades our airspace. Some speculate that it could have been part of some secret military project, but witnesses, like Mike Fortson, say they doubt that. I had no question in my mind when I saw it that it was nothing that we could have built just because of the sheer size of the craft. It's too long. We don't build 5,000 foot objects. It's top secret. Why be obvious? Second thing would be a hoax, and I don't know anybody that could do a hoax for over 400 miles. Some say the answer lies with the Maryland National Guard, which says it was conducting flare exercises on the Barry Goldwater test range outside Phoenix that night. Those are A-10 Thunderbolts that are right behind me. We're on a night illumination exercise over the Barry Goldwater range complex uh, southwest of Phoenix, and they were dropping high-intensity flares that deploy on a little parachute and uh, descend to the earth. And we think that those flares were mistakenly uh, called U UFOs by the folks in the, in the valley in Phoenix there. Trouble is, the Barry Goldwater test range is on the backside of the Australian mountains. The lights were seen in front of the mountains. These are the flares. These are the unknowns. Village Labs creates computer software for aerospace and the film industry. The company has been investigating the Phoenix lights for the past year. Jim Dilatoso says the lights do not fit the spectrum profile of any known object, including flares. If we look at the flares, they are the red. Right. The way that the flares come on is a very uneven pathway, and they're flickering and changing, and then they die and go out. The unknowns come on in a very regimented pathway, stay exactly the same, and then go out in a very gentle, intelligent manner. Could it be a hoax? If this is a hoax, it is a magnificent orchestration by some covert group. This hoax would be incredibly difficult to pull off because it's not just the lights. It's radar masking. It's hundreds of witnesses seeing it fly overhead and seeing unusual properties in between the lights. It doesn't have the characteristics of holograms, lasers, or flares. They mysteriously appeared and disappeared above the city of Phoenix just over a year ago, and witnesses are convinced they're a signature of alien life. Was it an ET sighting, a top-secret military exercise, perhaps a hoax? The mystery remains unsolved and controversial. Tonight, UPN News 13 investigates the Arizona lights. And Tammy Taylor is here with the story. Tammy. Fascinating story yeah. here. You know, some people have written off the mysterious lights as National Guard flares from a nearby training field. But analysis of the lights shows they do not fit the spectrum of flares or the light spectrum of any known object. And ask anyone who saw the things close up. Well, they will definitely tell you those lights weren't flares. There's a third one. They appeared just before 10 o'clock at night on March 13, 1997. Over a city of two and a half million people, a stunning formation of unusual bright lights captured on home video. When they came on, the light was, the first light was so bright, it was this orange golden ball of light in the sky, and then there was another one, and another one, and another one. And then they went, they decided to reverse and, and go, up, go out, and it was like, <gasps> You know, you had this, ooh, it went right Yeah, through. it was really scary by that then. That was really scary. Max and Shala Saracen were shaken to the core by the lights. Shaken because just two hours earlier, they, like hundreds of other witnesses, had seen something similar, only much closer, just a thousand feet above them. It was like a big V shape of lights. Mm -hmm. And as it got closer, it got kind of spooky because there was no noise with it. It was completely silent. And as it and glided over us, it blocked out the stars, and it's heading down towards the city. 
A few minutes later, the same thing happened to Tim Lay and his family. It had the point on the front, and the, and the, the arms were perfectly squared off, and the light was perfectly set, one in the front and two on each arm. And it, it looked like some kind of... Uh, geometric drawing coming across in the sky. Tim Lay says from a distance it looked like this, an image he created on a computer. But when it came overhead... It took up this whole neighborhood. The one arm went all the way over to that, over past that little hill where that house is over there. Tim and other witnesses all describe the same thing. They also have this similar impression. I don't think that they're from this planet or this time or this this technological civilization, they're not from here. There's no question that was an alien object. I know it. It was a spaceship. We don't have anything like that. I know two things for sure. I believe that there, whatever it was wasn't from around here. And the other thing the government knows about, and they're covering it up. Bill Grenier says he watched two bright objects in the western sky for two hours while driving his cement truck down Interstate 77 that night. They're separate, separate objects. They were objects. They were real live objects of some kind. He says the objects were about a mile apart when he got to the plant, which is right next to Luke Air Force Base. Also, I hear all this roaring going on at Luke. All of a sudden, two jets come off, and they, they had huge flames on They had the afterburners on. Bill goes on to describe the jets as they scrambled the objects. He almost flew over me and shot right for that closest object, whatever it was, that was closest to the base. And as soon as the jets got to the object, this thing like shot straight up and vanished right in front of my eyes. And that's, that was really what put me over the edge there when I, when I saw that. Max Saracen also says he saw fighter jets try to intercept an object while looking out into the desert from his patio. There were two of them. One um, went underneath it and oh, the, yeah. the other one shot up in front of it and you could see the, the flames of the, jet, of the jet coming from behind it and it shot away, but the two jets had intercepted it. Luke Air Force Base told UPN News 13 the base did have F-16 fighter planes training that night, but the training area is a great distance from where the lights were spotted. Witnesses say otherwise. What went on here March 13th as a real signature event, uh, nothing like this has ever happened before. Literally. Mike Tanner has been investigating the Phoenix events for the past year. His company, Village Labs, creates software for the aerospace industry and films. Oh, I see <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five occasions when jets were deployed. This indicates four. What is his take on what happened that night? In the face of at least four attempted interceptions by military jets, uh, this clearly points to something way beyond the military and way beyond the government. This really points to an ET event, in my view. Was it a hoax? A secret military project? An unknown object? No one knows. And no one is officially trying to find out. The Air Force says it doesn't investigate sightings such as the lights over Phoenix. Not since Project Blue Book was closed in 1969. No one else in the government admits investigating either. The whole thing doesn't make any sense to me. Not only the fact that it seems nobody wants to talk about this, nobody wants to deal with it, but then the other way, which is, I mean, I've gotten hundreds and hundreds of phone calls from people that saw this that night. Former Phoenix City Councilwoman Frances Emma Barwood is the only city official to try to look into it. When she suggested to her colleagues that they at least ask some questions, the reaction was stony silence and later ridicule. Even the governor made a joke out of it. Now this just goes to show that you guys are entirely too serious. <laughs> but the witnesses find no humor in it at all. They want answers. This was a reality. We saw this. And the only ones openly looking for answers are independent civilian investigators like Mike Tanner at Village Labs and his partner Jim Dilatoso. They say light spectrum analysis of the videotape only shows them things that the object is not. We know that it is not hale -Bopp. We know it is not Venus. It is not an airplane. It is certainly not flares. But we don't know what it is. But witnesses like Mike Fortson have become obsessed with finding out what they saw, spending hours on the Internet doing research, and every night out on the patio looking at the skies with the video camera pointing upward, ready to capture whatever.
there are debunkers out there that like to trash it. They're against the truth, but we're for the truth. I'm for the truth. I just want the truth. Now, other private citizens, other than private citizens, who is looking for the truth? Well, not that they could do much, but the Phoenix City Council is specifically not interested in finding out about the lights. The Air Force, as we said, says it doesn't investigate unknown objects anymore. NORAD, which was rumored to have been on high alert that night, told UPN News 13 that it only tracks man-made objects. They say objects that originate in our atmosphere. The CIA, some other intelligence agency, well, if they're investigating, we don't know about it, and chances are we never will. Yeah, it's kind of hard to dismiss something like that, especially the people who saw whatever they saw at a thousand feet away. There were so many people who saw it, and the stories are so consistent yeah. right. over such a mm -hmm. widespread area. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. They Very don't know. They want to know what they saw. We were I intrigued. don't blame them. Yeah. I do, too. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> March 13th, 1997. UFOs were seen traveling over wide areas of the Southwest. In particular, hundreds of people saw a group of lights move over Phoenix, Arizona. Home to over 2.7 million people, Phoenix is a metropolitan oasis, not exactly a hotbed of UFO activity. Thursday I was done watching TV about 10 o'clock and I went outside to just to check the yard before I turned in for the night and I noticed a bright light up on the uh, Strea Mountains, further to the east than I've ever s seen one before. Hey, Sue, take a look at this. Oh, my God. Oh. That evening, I walked out my kitchen door at 10.20 p.m. to check on my son who was doing some work on some rather large gates that we're building. My attention was called to what I first thought was an approaching formation of airplanes. I can see it very clearly now, and if there was only a way to plug a wire into my head, I could give you a perfect description of it. It was a large V-shaped formation of amber lights, very bright. It was roughly about 9.50. Um, we live out east of town, about 25 miles from where these lights were, uh, were elevated up on a desert uh, foothills. I walked outside on our back uh, deck just to do some chores, to shut some... Uh, irrigation off right there in the sky were the nine lights uh, they were just suspended and it was actually looked like two objects close together two orange objects then about a minute and a half later more of them started appearing i got that Wait, one on video there's just four of them look at the three of them all together i got the third one popping there's one behind the chimney one just fired up i got four of them major sighting here thousands of people saw these lights this amazing video footage has stirred an unprecedented media blitz and nationwide investigation. The Phoenix Lights may now be the most significant and well-documented UFO sighting in history. Our video ran all day on a local affiliate here March 14th. and It was a huge story here in town, but it didn't take off nationally until, until the USA Today article, and then it's, it's just been gangbusters ever since. This footage has been shown on every national news broadcast and provoked the government to give a series of plausible explanations, including military maneuvers and National Guard flares. But witnesses and experts alike are not convinced. I don't know what it was, but um, I did get to go down to a local affiliate here that shot flares and looking at them that there was no, there was consistency with the brightness, but that was it. The flares drifted into one another. You could see them moving where these lights were suspended. They didn't move. So I kind of shot that theory down, at least for me. I feel pretty certain that flares were shot off that night. But that's not what people saw and videotaped in Phoenix. Jim Dilatoso is a video expert who has been researching alleged UFO footage for over 20 years. He has reviewed most of the footage shot that evening. This is a videotape shot by Chuck Reardon, who lives in the far east part of the valley. At this point, the lights have been on, and now they're going off one at a time. Every single one of these lights we've studied for their optical characteristics. Jim studied the wave patterns of the Phoenix lights and compared them to the flares. In this image, we have the flares that have been shot by a local news crew that went down to the gunnery range and you can see up here the red, green, and blue components of this flare light. It's an interesting wave. You can see that the red, green, and blue components form kind of a cluster. 
Now let's go over to the light from the Mike Kristen Moon Valley shot, which we'll put on a graph down here. And let's look at this light. Now the most obvious difference is that the light from the unknown shot by Mike Kristen is a clear wave shape where the components, red, green, and blue, are graphs that are right on top of each other. Jim went on to conclude that the red, green, and blue graphs are at distinctly different levels. The lights themselves are extremely unique. We haven't been able to find a manufacturer of electronic, electric, or pyrotechnic lights who could actually make these lights. Who did make these lights? Recently, Phoenix City Councilwoman Frances Emma Barwood took the story to the City Council. And I said, could we look into why nobody's investigating these lights that flew over Phoenix and uh, find out what happened? And it was like the silence. After the meeting, I was told by one of the deputy city managers that I shouldn't have asked that question. The deputy city manager said that the mayor really didn't want to have to deal with it, that apparently there was a statement that was issued from his office saying there are no UFOs over Phoenix. Councilwoman Barwood has been ridiculed publicly and privately for her investigation. You know, this is my first experience with something like this. And, you know, people in general don't trust the government. And this is just giving them more ammunition to not trust the government. Honestly, I don't care what it was, but you know, it really kind of made me wonder is like why nobody else was curious about it. Why doesn't our government want to know what it is? And the only reason that I can think that nobody wants to look into it is that they already know what it is. Whatever the lights were, it may not have been the first time these lights have been seen in Arizona. The tradition of aliens or star beings and their spacecraft may be recorded in ancient cave and rock art. I think one needs to understand that in Native America in general, uh, star beings are parts and parcel of our very existence. I don't think that UFOs are anything new to Arizona. They seem to go back all the way into the first time we could draw on walls and paint and carve into stone. We are descended from them. So we are simply their offspring. They are our ancestors. One thing is for certain. Tom King and his fellow eyewitnesses are convinced that what they saw is extraterrestrial. You can't keep saying these things to the military when you got objects flying over downtown Phoenix at 8 o'clock, 8.30, over a mile long and are transparent. I have yet to see the military roll out one of these off the production line. And when they do, I'll kiss the president's ass, but until then, that object is alien spacecraft in my opinion. While Tom and his fellow Skywatchers continue to document the ongoing sightings, several questions remain. If this was an alien spacecraft, what was it doing in Phoenix? Former commercial pilot Trig Johnston believes that the object wanted to be seen. And it was paraded down Scottsdale Road, one of the busiest roads in the city, like a float in a Rose Bowl parade. It meant to be seen, it wanted to be seen. And one of the things was that we got the impression that a lot of our friends have I've spoken with who have seen this is that you have kind of an impression that this is not a threat, it's a friendly. 